Morning car lovers, welcome back my friends. I'm Bobby Freeman. Today, my friends, we're gonna be looking at the Tesla Model 3. Now, this is the first Tesla we've featured on this channel, and I've always been kind of intrigued by Teslas, right from what, you know, way back when in the days where I think it was about sort of 2008 when they first started appearing and they just had a little kind of, it was like a little kind of Lotus Elise kind of thing and it never really went anywhere. I remember seeing they had a little weird little showroom tucked away in one of the back streets in London. I thought that's not, you know, that's a bit of a gimmick. That's not going to, you know, be anything big. However, I was bang wrong, my friends, because now they've literally, well, I don't think they've taken over the world, but they've certainly kind of given a you know a seismic shake to the motor industry by coming along knowing nothing about it and basically kind of becoming market world market leaders in electric cars and as i've said before i'm not a huge fan of electric cars i don't think we're really quite there yet with the infrastructure certainly not in this country but let's put that aside for this review today let's just have a look at it have a drive in it and let you know what i bloody well think and as my regular viewers know i'm not a big fan per se of electric cars i don't think we're there yet with the infrastructure or with the technology yet but we'll put that aside for this review because i'm just going to I'm just going to approach it with an open mind and an open heart and uh, ev everything wide open. Open um, uh, open jacket, open trap, not open trousers, no, but I, I think I'm going to an area I want to uh, move away from. But let's, let's just review the car and find out what it's like. So let's have a nice look round it. As you can see, it's pretty cool, sleek looking thing. I think the, you know, the original versions of this car were a little bit mundane, a little bit kind of uninspired. Dare I say it, kind of a little bit boring as well, but this one, they've kind of, they've not changed it hugely. You can still kind of see it's the same car, but they've kind of, you know, sneaked in a few styling cues and sort of giving it a nice few tweaks here and there. I think it looks pretty cool now. This, particularly in this color, you know, the white and the black. I'm always a big fan of the black styling touches on any car, but I think it works particularly well with this. Also, if you want a nice bright red color or something like that, it can cost you £2,000 for this. So I say stick with this white. It looks really, really nice. They've also got rid of the great big kind of uh, gaping, uh, what do you call it, like the great big hole in the front, which made it look like a kind of a basking shark, which is uh, uh, always a good thing. This one's also got the glass roof on the top there which looks kind of black from the outside but obviously you can see through it from the inside that looks really cool as well black on the door handles there and the black little bits at the side here these ones are the 19s you can get it in 18s 19s and 20s it is a little bit dirty this one apologies about that i thought tesla would have probably possibly cleaned it up for me but uh, but they didn't and as we come around the back here you've got a nice uh black lip spoiler along here as well i always like a lip spoiler and i always like an ambulance drives past and ruins my video as well you bastards but the back i think is a particularly good angle for this one look at that that is a pretty looking car i love these headlights as well they're very headlights the rear headlights rear lights god damn it i love the rear lights they're very very cool it's just a it's just all over a kind of nice mixture of understated but really really stylish for, uh, for for the kind of car it is so let's have a look at the boot that does have a kind of a hatchback kind of uh opening mechanism which kind of restricts it a little bit but generally speaking pretty good size cavernous boot look at that you get 17 uh, strapping men in there or you know rounded up to the nearest 17. the seats will also fold completely flat as well but it's absolutely pissing down a rain here as you can probably see so i'm going to give you a rather cursory look around the boot to be honest there's no tethering points or anything to speak of it's literally just a boot you do have a little bit more under there as well to keep all your charging stuff so generally speaking for this size of car that's an excellent size boot now there is also a front boot as well but i'm getting absolutely soaked today so uh, as you can probably see by all the uh, the wet there on the steering wheel and on the side here so you just have to take my word for it it's a very nice boot but uh, to be honest you're not missing much it's just a small boot so price wise for the um, uh, standard range one you're going to be looking at around £43,000 but for the performance one it's going to nip up right up to £57,000 so it is a lot more performance but you're going to pay quite a bit more for it and if you want the full autopilot that's going to be another seven grand as well so you could very easily spend quite a bit of money when you're buying one of these now in terms of charging almost all the model threes will go from around about you know pretty much nothing up to 80 percent in about half an hour on a fast charger i I'd still perplex me why they say only to 80 percent well no no it doesn't really because it's because the last 20 percent takes a long time god knows why but that's just the way it is but from zero pretty much to 80 percent around about half an hour on a fast charger the entry level model has a single motor powering the rear wheels and that will give you 296 brake horsepower with about 270 mile range for the long range that's going to give you at 200 196 brake horsepower and 278 mile 
range. For the long range, that's going to give you 367 brake horsepower and 360 mile range. Then you've got the long range, which actually has dual motors. So one power in the front, one power in the back, and that's going to give you 367 horsepower and 360 miles. Then you get up to the performance model, which is this one. And this also has dual, motor, dual motors, one power in the front, one power in the back. But this is going to give you 462 brake horsepower and 352 mile range. Now, 352, that's pretty good. If you can get it to actually do that, a lot of electric cars, uh, I haven't actually tested this one yet, but a lot of electric cars will say around 300, but really I've, when I've got in them, they're only really around 200. But I believe Tesla is more accurate with that. So, uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we, we, we shall find out. So let's have a look around the cockpit, shall we now? As this is a Tesla, it is literally, there's hardly anything here. It's very, very sleek, very, very minimalistic. One thing I do kind of, I'm surprised that I like, is this kind of wood finish here, because generally, traditionally speaking, in a uh, in a car, you you, you would perceive wood to be as something that an old man has in, you know, a Jaguar from about 35 years ago. It's generally, uh, I, I feel that way anyway. I think, you know, if there's wood in the car, I'd be like, I do not want it. However, Tesla have kind of brought it into the here and now, and somehow it looks kind of chic when it's sort of offset with the kind of the, sort of the brushed aluminium as well and the dark leathers and soft touch plastics. Pla plastics? We'll try that again. Soft touch plastics. I can actually speak. It kind of looks really, really chic and really, really nice. Now, usually in my reviews, I pan around the car and show you all the different switches and the different options and things and all over it. But to be honest, as you see, as I said before, there's virtually nothing in here in the way of switches. You've got the what this one over here to open the door. That's a real button. You've got the uh, buttons down here to open the window. Couple of dials on the steering wheel, but that's kind of it, to be honest. Everything else is done over here on the screen, which is kind of in the middle. Well, it's exactly in the middle. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this big screen in the middle of the Teslas, because even, I mean, you haven't even got any, um, look at this, there's no even dial here, there's nothing at all. Now, I think in terms of driving, that's not a particularly great idea, because I want to be just, if I'm, che well, checking my speed, for example, I want to be just looking straight down, straight down and straight up again. It, it, they could have gone, obviously the speed on, on this one is usually, well, it's always up here, right in the corner. So it's quite close, but it's still a little bit of a distance to look down. And if you wanted to look at the map, it's all the way over here. I mean, look, look, I'm going that way and I'm looking down here. That could be a problem because there could be could be a ditch coming over there very, very quickly. Also, of course, you have all the little controls that you would have done manually on there as well. So if we press this, all the things, like even the folding the mirror, fold, oh God. Even the folding of the mirrors on there, the adjusting the mirrors, the uh, direction of the um, of the um, um, air blowers. Air blowers, that's not really like, well, I'm not happy with that. Air vents, air vents, the direction of the air vents, it's all kind of on here. So unless you're really familiar with it, I suppose after a while you would get familiar with it, but it's still tip tap tapping on the screen like that, which is weird to me because um, it's actually illegal in this country if I've got a uh, phone over here in a cradle I'm not allowed to touch that, or indeed over there in a cradle. I'm not allowed to touch that at all, okay? I can't touch it, and if, if I do, I will get uh, instantly arrested and thrown in prison and uh, rot away for, well, maybe, maybe not for years, but for, I don't know, significant length of time. But apparently, it's not illegal to touch the old uh, Tesla screen over here. Maybe that will change, I don't know. But I'm not, I, I mean, the technology-wise, I mean, it, it's really, really impressive. It works really well. It's really, really smooth and great to use and everything, but not while I don't think it's a good idea to be uh, encouraging people to do it. I sound like a boring old fart, don't I? I don't think it's a good idea to encourage people to do that while you're driving a motor vehicle. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. What I do like down here is you have a couple of slots here for phones to uh, wirelessly charge them. And they're also soft touch. They feel like Alcantara. I don't know if they are or not, but it's soft. So they don't uh, fly around the place. Gives enough grip to uh, for your chrome to stick there. That is a very, very good idea. I like that. Also got a ginormous storage section there. Absolutely. Oh my God, it's very very, very deep and it goes up there as well. You could probably get almost a small side of smoked salmon if you folded it double. And of course, we've got the obligatory cup holders down here. Very, very nice. And they're kind of textured in there to stop your uh, cup moving around too much. Nice armrest there. Lift that up and a bit of extra storage down there as well. It slopes up quietly there. So quite quietly. I suppose it is quite quietly, really. But you could probably get that would restrict the amount of sandwiches you get in there. You probably get about four or five rounds of uh, cheese and pickle. The seats look kind of mundane to me. They're not 
massively comfortable, but they're okay. They're not what I would call sports seats. And let's not forget, this is a pretty fast, it's a very fast car as well. I would like something slightly sportier, but I suppose they're kind of sleek and fit in with the general design of the car. So in the back, I like this. I like this very, very much. It's quite comfortable, more comfortable than I thought, actually. I thought it might be a little bit cramped in here, but as you can see, my legs have ample room there and not only do they have ample room there's also ample room underneath the seat there look how much i can whittle my toes like that wiggle i think i said whittle there i meant wiggle definitely you also get no hump in the middle here look at that it's distinctly hump free there unlike my jaguar xf which is a bloody nightmare it has a huge it's like you got a camel in the back of the car it's ridiculous as you can see there's not quite as much room over there but to be fair i did have that seat set quite far back for filming but as you can see very very nice the seats are kind of cooler in the back somehow they're, they're very very similar but somehow they look slightly better let's have a look at this armrest here pull that down now that you know nice armrest you know great yeah it's, it's a place for which to uh, rest your arm however what is the point of having an armrest when you've got two great big cup holders in because i can just my elbow will go in there and that's most i don't know if you've uh, seen a comfy arm before but it definitely does not look anything like that stick that back up don't like that very much but what i do like is the awesome panoramic roof look at this oh, oh dear what's this in the middle it does have this rather strange dividing section which kind of ruins the look a little bit however this is still very very nice as you can see it goes all the way back there it goes all the way down to the boot so it's almost like the entire roof is glass apart from this strange little bit here but uh, that is a nice touch anyway so in terms of drive it's basically you know as all electric cars are it's super super nice to drive super smooth super quick and just kind of everything you want it to be the regen thing when you take your foot off the throttle is a little bit kind of um a little bit too aggressive in my opinion but you can adjust that and i but I'm, that's something like something i'm trying to get used to it's something that i don't really like that much it makes me feel a little bit sick but uh, as i said before i'm trying to get used to it i might get there at some point but in terms of steering and everything it's super quick very very responsive i mean supremely like sort of unhumanly responsive actually very very nice i like that actually that might be a bit too much for some people oh god there goes the regen but it really does like kind of nothing i've ever driven really a kind of touch tiny little adjustments make a real kind of a real quick kind of response to the driving i i, I, I could you know i could get used to that just throwing it into a bit of a bend here and it's nice and firm into the corners some people have criticized it for being a little bit too stiff it's it's a reasonably bumpy road down here i'd say it's okay a little bit firm perhaps a little bit on the sporty side but i believe they are uh, addressing that in the new one which is due out next year again like i said before i don't like this uh speedometer being kind of just over there i know it's not far away but it could really benefit from a heads-up display i don't know what they've got you know there's so much technology on this car why didn't they just put a heads-up display could that, that have been particularly difficult i don't think so in fact i'm really surprised that uh that tesla don't do that and as far as i'm aware they don't even off, uh, offer that as an option now one thing it really shines at and that's visibility because this windscreen at the front comes absolutely feels like it comes all the way down to your feet it's awesome i really really like that so we're just coming onto dual carriageway now so i'm gonna gun it a little bit and give oh <laughs> yeah that's um that's pretty fast. Driving positions, pretty good. Obviously, it's a fairly low car, but again, thanks to that wonderful windscreen, the, um, uh, the visibility is very, very good. And it kind of feels about right, right where it should be. It feels, feels amazingly kind of, not amazingly, but it really does feel like a sporty car. For something that, that I don't think it looks like a particularly sporty car, but certainly when, you, when you're driving it, it definitely does. So guys, all in all, it's a pretty impressive car. I mean, it's a very impressive car because I love all the little quirks of it. I like the way it's super different. You know, when you get into it, it's like nothing you've ever driven before. I don't like the way that the, obviously, the, as I said before, I don't like the way this uh, screen is kind of in the middle of down there. I think they could have gone slightly better on that. However, in terms of drive, it is absolutely fantastic. It's so innovative um it's literally bristling uh, prickling with innovation if you can imagine such a thing and i think you know because i've said before i'm you know, not a big fan of electric cars generally however if you are going to get one i think it's got to be a tesla if it's not only for the uh, amazing supercharger network that tesla operate I, I would be a little bit i think i'd suffer really badly from range anxiety in any electric car but probably a lot less in a tesla and for that alone i'd say it's probably 
probably one of, if not, you know, you know it, I'm going to go definitive. It's definitely the best electric car I've ever driven. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope you've taken all sorts of useful and informative information away from it. If indeed you have, don't forget to uh, express this, uh, uh, the enjoyment you had from doing that by uh, subscribing to my channel, press the like button on the video. And if you want to support the show, head over to the Patreon page uh, or, or click the button below this video to join my YouTube members. But until next time, guys, I'm Bobby Freeman. Drive safe.